Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Brandy. How is everybody? Uh, it's still Monday, right? <laughs> yes. Doing good so far. <laughs> good. Just give me a sec. I'm going to call in from my phone so you guys can hear me a little better. I've been told I, people can't hear me very well sometimes. I can hear you just fine. So, okay. Well, Whatever you'd gonna... like to do, we'll test it out for you. Okay, good. Let's see here. Join back. Go back. Meetings. Here we go. This is not what I want to do. Uh, settings. I'm logged in properly. Ugh, technology, huh? Well, let's try this. It's on okay. holiday two. Huh? I said the technology is on holiday too. Yeah, for real. Oh yeah, it's holiday today. Yeah, Martin Luther King. Let's see here. Somewhere on this Zoom, it should just give me the meeting, but it's it's saying I have to start it and I can't join. Oh, maybe I can't be logged in twice. So let's try this. Let me log out and log into a different account maybe. Let's try this. Gonna see if I can outsmart it. <sighs> Not yet. But we can hear you fine so far. Yeah. All right, well, it's outsmarting me, so we'll just, we'll leave it. I'm glad that you can you can hear today. Um, let's go back to the Zoom. Hi, Steve. Hi, Pete. <laughs> and and I don't hello, know. Hello. Is it is it Trecha? Tre Chad. That's Chad. Chad Richardson, one of okay. members of our my team here. So awesome. glad to have Chad with us here. Yeah. And Marunal, welcome. Susan is coming. Awesome. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Share screen. And connect this. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right. I'm gonna give um, people one to two more minutes to join. While we're sitting here, does anybody have any, um, you know, just questions about anything we've talked about over the last, let's say six, seven weeks? Expression of appreciation of you offering these sessions, Brandy, that's for sure. You are so welcome. It is my pleasure. I, I really like taking the time to dive deeply into things. So this gives us the opportunity to do that. It's awesome. Thank you. And just piggybacking off of Steve, who is my direct report, I want to thank you for these opportunities. This is my second session. And just so that you know, I am strongly advocating to my inner pod, my team, that we take advantage of these sessions. Thank you again. Thank you awesome. for providing this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks for joining. Let's see here. Is there, let me ask this, <laughs> who's asking this? Is there a word or two missing from the Franklin quote? I don't know. <laughs> Is there, Julie? <laughs> Hey, in my head, hide not your talents, they for use were made. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yes. I don't know. 
<laughs> Real Yoda ish, kind of Yoda esque. I, I don't really. Know. For their use, they were made or something, but yeah. <laughs> use not they were I, made. I guess a comma they for you. Learn much we do. <laughs> yeah, very Yoda esque. Um, for the record, I don't really love this quote. Like, I don't get it at all, but people have told me they love it. So I just threw it on here, right? Because. It came from Gallup somewhere in there, you know. People are like, "Oh, I love the quote." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, basically, I don't get it." Basically, if you got it, flaunt it. If you yeah. have tan it, talent, talent, yeah. flaunt it. Do yeah. not don't hide. forget. Ben said this in his time, not yeah. our time. <laughs> yeah, what's a sundial in the shade? So right? yeah. I'm like, what's a sundial? I don't even know. Oh what wow! What? <laughs> and and ye and your, and the ye and your, and we'll be okay. <laughs> Right. You are kidding, right? You know what a sundial is. No, I have no clue. No, she's kidding. Don't make no. me feel that old. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, you can fill me in later. I don't uh, expect you to be using one, but to know. <laughs> you know, it looks oh, like a bird bath with a big triangular thing that points outside. You figure out where the sun is and. Okay, never mind. Why do you need a dial to figure out where the sun is? Because no. they didn't have, they you didn't have, um, it was to tell the time then. of day. <laughs> I, she, you know what? I'm not falling into this trap. I'm not, really? falling, I, I, boomer. I'm not gonna fall into the boomer really? trap. <laughs> Just like they had a compass in a boat, this little round wheel going. Yeah. I uh, think you're going this way. Yeah, this is being recorded yet. Yeah, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm definitely <laughs> separating myself from this conversation. <laughs> and not Good gonna idea, Chad. <laughs> is gullibility a strength? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let the, me look. the 35th strength. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and Brandy, I just looked up the quote and there's no words missing. It's yes. just an odd quote. <laughs> yeah. According to brainy quote, the brain quotes, brainy quotes. It is correct. Oh, brainy, yeah. Um, maybe it's just a conversation starter. <laughs> that that's the, the icebreaker. The icebreaker, and, and it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. <laughs> Randy, he might have been in your situation then. This is part of his coaching. Hi, not your talents. They were yeah. use. They for use were made. Yeah, What's the sundial in the shade? It's a poem. It's effective conversation. Ah. Uh... Okay. Get, Almost haiku-ish. Yeah, let's keep going. Um, so today we're going to talk about connectedness. How many people on the call have connectedness as a top five strength? Anybody? Me. Five. No, Lori. Lori, you do? Okay. Yep, number five. Yeah. Okay, so, so Lori, who else? Bob. <clears throat> can you Marunal? hear me Marunal do you yes yeah I, I thought so okay so here's the deal this is my 34th strength <laughs> wow how many how many strengths are there <laughs> 34 <laughs> it's number dead 16 last for me <laughs> <laughs> dead right laugh middle. so um I've been able to learn about it I've been able to appreciate it I even think this way to some extent from my upbringing, my natural teachings, but I don't, this is not, this isn't like something that's in my core to my bones that, that just is right. It's not a state of being for me. So, um, if at any time you connectedness folks have something to add to this conversation, please add it because I think what's most valuable in these sessions is to really get the perspective from somebody who do has this strength and the way they think about it. I did interview somebody to, to understand the strength in depth for this one specifically because I don't have it anywhere near my top 10. Um, but again, that was just one perspective. So uh, please feel free to share and speak up at, at any point in time. Just stop me, okay? All right, so connectedness is found 12% of the time in a person's top five strength capacity. Is that on the high end or the low end, guys? We should be getting good at this by now. Middle? 
It's yeah, and it's a little bit more on the low, right? Because 30 percent is high, five percent is low. And so it gets to be just a little bit more on the lower side of the spectrum than the high, right? You've got 88% of people out there who do not have this as a top five strength. <laughs> it falls into the relationship building quadrant. Mm. And I think it actually also falls into the strategic thinking quadrant. I think it, it think it's a hybrid that is thinking and connecting from a relational relational standpoint because it does two things it connects with people but it also connects small things with the bigger picture as well like to me my experience has been that people that are architects have this way of thinking as well so i think it falls both into the relational and the strategic thinking way of thinking when we look at the strength zones, um, you can see that it falls into the people management zone because it just, it is so good at just simply connecting with all walks of life all around the globe. It's very accepting. It's not just accepting of different um, personalities of different people from different countries and religions and all that stuff, but it actually sees them as necessary to the bigger picture. And so, this person, people that have connectedness, usually when they're put in positions of managing other people in relationships, they do extremely well. Okay. All right. So here's some of the traits. I'm going to let you read through these for a second. And I would like y'all to ask some questions because it took me a while to really, of course, it's my 34th. It took me a while to really put all the pieces and parts of this one together to see it holistically. So I want you to read through these and, and ask a few questions about this to get our dialogue started today. Brandy, this is Bob. I was thinking right before I got on. Hi, Bob. Hi there. I remember, you know, you know, I sent you an article this morning. And when I saw that article, because the connectedness is my number three, I saw that article and very shortly after that, I thought Brandy would enjoy this. I did. And so enjoy I it. shot it over to you and that happens all the time. So for somebody that connectedness is in their number five, um, those connections kind of just happen intuitively or something, you know, I don't know. You know, I can't. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying. Gee, I wonder who would like to <laughs> to see this. It's just. It just pops into my head that I should send this to you because it'll be of interest to you. Now, Bob, do you that a later? Can a later do that? Yeah, just a, just a sec. Let's let's put Bob's moment because what happened? Bob, you also have individualization, right? Yes. Yeah, those two go together for me a lot. They, they actually intensify one another yeah. because the individualization piece goes, who is my individual that I'm interacting with? What do they really care about? How are they motivated? What helps them be better? How do I help them be more productive? So what you sent me today was spot on for what I love to study and, and know about and learn. And, and, um, it was good. It was very, very good. It wasn't, you know, a lot of people send me stuff that I don't, I don't necessarily care about, you know, but what you sent me was spot on and that is your individualization piece. Okay. So even without connectedness, you would most likely do that because what individualization does is it also goes, not only how do I motivate and get into the psychology of this person, but how do I partner them with other people and other resources and whatnot to be their best self, okay? So you already have that aspect with your individualization. Now, the connectedness piece is a little bit different, Bob. Okay. It says, it, it makes the connections for sure, okay? It makes the connections. But what it adds is it goes, Brandy, you have a very special place in this world, in this society, in this globe, you have something to contribute that impacts the energy and the other individuals and the other countries and the other companies 
and you can you can see that you can see how my small contribution you know or contributions add up to this bigger picture so when you take an action like that it's not just about oh brandy would enjoy this and this would motivate her and this would get her doing her best work which is your individualization piece which you're also doing but it's the other piece that says you know she's doing something that is is contributing to the world in a meaningful way there's a purpose and i feel a need she needs this because if she has this then she's going to be able to continue to contribute or to contribute you know more or better in that capacity to impact the world in a positive um interesting way so that's that, the yeah you have those two pieces going on simultaneously that makes sense and and it's also true i think you know everybody's got i mean we all like strength finders, right? And so we know everybody has something special, certain things that they're really, really good at. And, and if we're good at understanding what those are, then we're able to selfishly take advantage of them. We're also able to can use what they have or that need what they have. It also comes in handy, like, because I'm an older guy, I get asked all the time, you know, about, well, what about my career? And what should I do? And all that. Well, understanding those things and how those relate to everything else, including the culture of a company or, or that kind of thing. You know, you just, I think, I think it all, it all relates, it all comes together. So it's, uh, it's a good stuff. Yes, now let's do this. So relators relate things. They have organized brains that say, this is related to that. So they also make connections, but they do it through relating. And they mm -hmm. can really only do it if they relate. So if they, or they can make the relational connection. Um, yeah. They're not necessarily, um, so, so the way that connected, so think about this guys is two people can get the same job done, but they're coming at it from different motivations. And they're they're coming at it from different reasons, and they're and the how is different. How they do it is different. So, a connectedness person is going to want to sit there and just connect. It's more of a spiritual energy. Um, you know, of course, they're going to get to know you, but it is a energy type connection where a relator is logical. A relator is going uh this relates with this and so and so is plays tennis and so does this other person so let me bring them together and i've been through this scenario before so i can relate with this other person but if i've never been through it i don't really relate and i'm not really thinking about how individual actions harm or hurt others and i'm not really thinking about how it all ties into the big picture i'm just making the relations where the connectedness is going you know we are all one and it's this economic way of thinking of you know um how does what this one person do in their actions as a lever affect all these other things does that make does, does that help um split the difference between how relator works and connectedness works yeah yeah thanks it's just the example he used like i do all the time too and i was like well wait a minute <laughs> yeah okay <clears throat> I, I think the other, there's a key word you used in there to me, Brandy, also you talked about spiritual. And I think most of us that are spiritual, regardless of, you know, what way or where that comes from, for me, I'm a committed Christian. Um, I think we see things, things connected. We see this happened because of that and that happened because of that. And there's not a lot of random things out there. There's, I, you know, you see the the connections of what's going on and how this influences that and that sort of thing. So, right. and the if this, look at the the second to the last bullet point, believes in a purpose beyond life's monotony, confident that everything happens for a reason, and yep. that is a gut feeling and intuition. It's not something that's taught for you guys. It's just something that you innately believe in. Okay, now um, connectedness is intensified when it is paired with these other strengths. Does anybody have one of these strengths in their top five along with the connectedness? I have ideation. 
Ideation is okay. my number. That's my number two. Okay. So when a person has both connectedness and ideation, they have a really strong aptitude of making connections. Why? Because ideation by itself connects seemingly disparate phenomena, right? You can take these really random things and somehow connect them. The example I love to give is the, um, the duck and insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Aflac, right? I mean, how does a duck and insurance go together and make one of the biggest well-known brands? Okay, that's ideation. That's a result of ideation. While connectedness makes the spiritual connections. So now you have two strengths that are making these, these connections. So therefore, when those two are paired together, they're intensified. Make sense? Yeah. Anybody else have any of these? No. How about these? Bob, I know you also have individualization. We've talked about. And strategic. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're like intensified, 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 intensified yeah, on those things. I guess so. <laughs> plus, plus one. Yeah. Okay. Relator yeah. is my number six. Uh huh. So just mm -hmm. outside the top five. Yeah. yeah. Still high though. Very high. Okay. I only had Includer and it's my number three. Okay, but do you also have connectedness anywhere close, Chad? Connectiveness is number 16. Okay, so you're not really gonna feel the intensification then of connectedness and includer. You would have to have them pretty close to the top five and they'd have to be you know, somewhat close themselves, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, so connectedness is most often paired with empathy. Hmm. And that tells us a little bit about the connectedness strength as well. If it has compassion for other people, then there's a highly likely chance, a 30% chance that it's also got empathy somewhere nearby. So I'll ask you, Bob, where is your empathy? It must be so far down, I don't even remember. <laughs> oh, do, you, do you need us to look? Let's look really quick. Let's look, hold on guys. I've got it here, I think. I don't, I don't know if I have all of them up right now. No, no worries. Uh, I'll just- You've just got it. Real quick. I've got them. So I'm gonna go over to this handy dandy little tool. If you guys do not have this yet, you can simply sign up at strengthologyinsights.com. Mm -hmm. And I am gonna go check on Bob Parker. And we're gonna go look at his strengths. And he doesn't have the rest of them in here, so I don't know. <laughs> That's where we've concluded. We don't well, know where your empathy is. Well, we'll have to we'll have to figure that out later. Okay. So. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, now the one that what 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 is so interesting about connectedness is that it gets along with almost everybody. From a, from a generality standpoint, there are very few people connectedness do not get along with. They, they just get along with everybody. It's one of those really rare strengths along with individualization. Those are the two that just seem to get along with everybody. But what's so interesting about it is that it's never paired with competition. It's never paired with command. It's never paired with focus, significance, or self-assurance. It is paired with these in a top five capacity one percent of the time very rarely yeah across 24 million people mm -hmm. now if we look at those those strengths are more individualistic they are more um independent right um they are mm -hmm. they are the ones that think about uh oneness and and efficiency uh more so than being collaborative or thinking that we should all be doing it together or no one should be left behind, right? You've got competition who thinks everybody should be left behind because I need to win. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, exactly. that's, yeah. And so, so the, these strengths, and most of the time we only see one pairing here. It is so, this is the rarest encountering that we have when we have five strengths that are paired with it less than 2% of the time, only 1% of the time. Interesting, right? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are the strengths that I believe connect really well. So when you're talking about 
you know, someone with individualization does this intuitively. They, they put two people together, partners, and those people go motivate each other and go do great work. But the rest of us have to use data. So this is some data to have. If you have two people on your team and one of them has connectedness and another one has empathy or ideation or includer, then you can feel confident that pairing those two people together will at least give them some kind of connection, okay? Because these are the types of strengths that connectedness gets along well with. I don't know if this is how relevant this is, but it just popped into my head. I spent a, a lot, a big percentage of my career building partnerships between companies. And I think all those things played into that understanding uh -huh. who's looking for what and what, you know, A does this for B, B does this for A, everybody wins, all that kind of stuff. And I think probably a lot of that played into it. Yeah, you also have strategic. So your part, the partnerships that you were bringing together were strategic partnerships as well. They were, they really were, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so for, yeah, so for here, let me, let's just take one of these as an example. Let's take Includer. Connectedness, believe in connecting with diverse sets people, you know, valuing people all over the world, where includers have an innate value of, of believing that everyone should be included. So you could see how a connectedness person could value and, you know, someone who also has includer as a top five strength and an includer values the connectedness person because they have a similar um, value and a similar result, even though the motivation of that comes from a different place. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Ladies, yeah. okay. All right. Brian, now, I would say, I'm sorry. Um, I'm an includer. And so I'm looking at connectedness thinking, why is it higher? But I'm an includer. So that's why I think it sounds familiar. <laughs> I yeah. Think. Yeah. You're, the, the way that you might be connecting with connectedness is going, oh, I relate to some of these traits, but it's my includer. It's my, my need to include where, where it's coming from. That's right. You have similar values. Yeah. Cause I think it's number 13 on mine, um, which is still pretty high, I guess. It is. Um, so, because I, I really do feel that it's things happen for a reason. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. live on that. So I thought, huh, I wonder why, but I guess it's, I mean, it could probably, it probably gets me. And, and here's what you do when you, when you, when you're confusing yourself about that, look at your number 12, look at your number 11, look at your number 10, go up the line and say, do I innately do these other things more? Do I think of these other things more than connectedness? If you do, then the result is accurate. Does that make sense? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank so you. you're welcome. So some disruptors could be, you know, some of these more critical thinkers, um, you know, the ones that, there is a right and a wrong, you know, for analytical, there is absolutely a, a right and a wrong, a left and a right. There's a justification to the logic that they use where in connectedness is intuitive and, and it's, it's a sense and it, it has faith. It goes on faith and energy rather than, you know, needing the data. And so you can imagine, you know, a connectedness person having a conversation with an analytical person and the analytical insisting on the facts and the source and the connectedness saying, no, you just got to feel it. <laughs> and the <laughs> analytical is like, uh, no, I can't feel it. Um, so Okay, now you have the conversation that goes on in my head. Because <laughs> I, my analytical is my number three. Okay. And connectedness is my number five. And in between those two? is mm. maximizer. Yeah. Oh, so my good. head is full of those crazy conversations. That's really good. <laughs> but what you have is then a balance of both. And there's times when your critical thinking is going to come into play and it's going to overwrite. And there's times when your connectedness is going to come into play and it's going to overwrite for the reasons mm -hmm. that you have established. Now, which one is, what, what positions are they again? Analytical is three and connectedness is five. So ultimately your logic wins. Yeah. Because it is higher and it is going to be more important to you. It, it, you know, in a, in, a, in a situation that's really important, you're probably gonna lean a bit more on the data versus how you feel about it or your faith on it, right? Um, yeah, if there's- all the time. No, 
you're right. Um, I like facts. I like, if I can't make a decision, that means I don't have enough information. Yeah. So I need to analyze it a little bit more, sometimes too much. Mm -hmm. But then once I have that information, it's my gut feeling. How is it connected to me, my family, yes. my world? And then that's how I decide which way to go. Yeah. Um, sometimes the connectedness wins out. And yeah. it's like, I don't care what the data says. This yeah. feels wrong. I need to go the opposite direction. Right. And this, I'm relatively right 99% of the time following my gut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Thank Randy, you. I, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, if I look at these disruptors for connectedness, it'll seem like some portion of them, but I could be wrong on this. It seems like some portion of them would be related to CEOs, strong no. leaders. No. no. No, not right? Yeah, no, it, you would think that, right? I mean, we all, we all think that. Uh, when you go look at CEOs, yeah. They are all different, just like the normal population. Okay. The only thing that I have seen consistently as a trend among executives yeah. are the intensifications that they have. Mm -hmm. So they That's tend right. to be more intensified. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example, okay? This is this is a very good conversation, so let's just go with it really quick. Let's go back to users. My brother runs his own business. Let's look at him. Okay. So he has strategic and command. And when those two are together, they intensify one another. Mm. So now I want you to think about strategic to the second power. Okay. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. maximizer intensifies everything around it. It intensifies strategic <laughs> individualization command and focus. So now he has strategic to what? To the third power, right? Yeah. Command intensifies everything around it. Focus intensifies everything around it. So you're looking at strategic to what, right? The fourth, fifth, sixth power. If we go look at his rankings, okay, we also see that strategic and futuristic intensify one another when they're together. We also see that he has achiever, which intensifies everything around it. So you're talking strategic to the seventh, eighth power now. Like yeah. that is unbelievable. That's un that's so strong. And so you'll see those types of intensifications um, mm. in people that that are they're sort of like extreme. Let's say um, they end up being your executive team, your executive leadership teams, and your your CEOs. But I, it's amazing how these can be completely different for, you know, different strengths, different types of people, like all that can be different. It's just a matter of like, when you have zero intensifications, you're just not intense and you don't need, um, you don't need that lifestyle where the ones that are intensified, they kind of need that lifestyle and they actually do better and perform better in an intense lifestyle. Hmm. That's, that's the only consistency I've seen. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. It's interesting to me because I spend all my time, most of the consulting I do is with, with CEOs. Right. And I learned a long time ago that I'm not one of those. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, you kind of are. You kind of are. Um, it's yeah. just, you know, depending on what you'd be a CEO of, Bob, right. uh, because you are very relational. So if you were a CEO of a relational process, like let's say a relational um, you know, strategic partnership company, that would be totally different. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of yeah. the what, because you, you do have a lot of intensification. Okay. So let's look at peeves really quick. What could really, you know, frustrate a connectedness? Um, if, if it's very difficult for them when, when other people aren't seeing the connections that they see, because they don't know necessarily how to explain it. They don't know necessarily how to help the other person see it. And they see it, but they not being able to get someone else to see it is very frustrating to them. The other thing that came up as very frustrating to them is when people are being harmed. They really have an eye for that. They don't like it when people are getting hurt or harmed, especially if it's due to their actions. Any other thoughts on, on 
let's ask Maruno, you know, is there anything that from a connectedness standpoint that really bothers you? Um, yeah, I think the, uh, uh, thank you. I think, yeah, that's mainly the, the being human, <laughs> being human part um, really, really stands out, meaning I'm always watching over my shoulder on anything that I'm doing, mainly for the fact that, um, again, the, M M the empathizer is not in the top five, but um, again, with, with a lot of my interactions, I mean, empathy plays a big role. And so it's me watching over my shoulder and just that, you know, the, the humanness like really comes out and just, just, yeah, I mean, again, I don't know yet, like to the what degree, uh, you know, it's amplified, but I mean, uh, I think that's just one tidbit I'll add is. And um, would you, would yeah. you agree, Maruno, that like when people are interacting with you in a way that's like, it, sorry, empathetic, caring, accepting, you know, if, if someone's kind, that would you say that they are going to get a better result with you than if they're not? Um, yes and no. Um, I think the, uh, with, with that, uh, yeah, the, the, the yes is because yes, I mean, that's the, that's the programming, that's the conditioning. Um, the no is because um, I think it, it still creates, you know, some blind spots with, you know, how that interaction is going to go uh, in terms of the, the trajectory of it. So there may be some oversight. Um, definitely. I mean, yeah, you know, um, I'll be more receptive, you know, I'll be, again, the, the approach is going to be very warm, um, you know, comfort and mm -hmm. um, att attend attending to the, attending to the, I mean, understanding who the other person is. And then again, with Maximizer in there, it's going to be, you know, attending to the, the whole person, you know, versus just, you know, um, you know, that one avenue or, you know, um, but um, yeah, with, with the, with the blind spot is that, um, it's going to create a blind spot. And then the, you know, where, um, uh, what was I going to add to that is that, uh, um, okay, if, if they're not, um, you know, if they're not warm or if that interaction is not, then definitely, I mean, yeah, for, for someone, I think for, for my case is that, I mean, I'm more on guard. And so then, again, you know, the maximizer will still come in. I'll try to understand, engage, you know, who, who the person yep. is, you know, in the entirety and, and make sure that, um, again, the, the delivery element of it is, is you know, um, exactly what, um, you know, what is asked for, and then some, right, so, mm -hmm. um, and, and always in a good way, but yeah, um, yeah. again, the, the, I think the, <laughs> the human is, you know, being, being, I guess the, yeah, the human element is both, you know. The priority, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. Model, yeah, appreciate you sharing that. So, there, yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's opportunities and there's challenges, so I think the other right. one is you know, having blind and spots. Yeah. And again, guys, we have a mixed bag of personalities, you know, just, we are just focused on connectedness, you know, and, and I know that you guys have a bunch of other aspects to your personalities, you know, with all your different pairings and all your different strengths. Um, so, you know, when we talk about connectedness today, we're not trying to put somebody in a box and say, this is you, and this is only you, and this is the only, um, you know, way that you operate. What we're trying to do is just help everyone on the call understand that if you are working with a connectedness person, this is going to be one aspect of their personality that you need to consider. Um, so they are typically at their best when they are in a community setting, when they are with people and when those people are working well together. That is really when they feel like they can do their best work. Uh, what they love to hear is um, that they are good at connecting and bridging gaps and working cross-culturally or globally with others. They take a lot of pride in being able to do that. And like they take a lot of pride in seeing the disconnects and then bringing those people together to, to create this holistic picture of we are all necessary, we are all needed and a part of this. And that's how they also get buy-in and loyalty is they help each individual feel that they are absolutely necessary to the outcome that's trying to be achieved, okay? Some of the things that you guys might hear that is not very pleasant to hear, or you might actually take pride in it, it can go either way, it just depends, 
but someone might use these in a bad sense, right? They might say, oh, you're just so philosophical or, you know, not everything is connected or, you know, you always connect unrelated things or you draw conclusions where they don't exist. Um, when you hear these types of things, these are actually indicators that you're just flexing that muscle with the wrong person in the wrong spot, you know, at the wrong time, at the wrong event. And it's your job to go, oh, um, okay, that's not what should be used here. That's not what's being asked. So let me flip one of my other strengths on and try this from a different angle. Now, if you flip on another strength and it doesn't work and you flip on another strength and it doesn't work and you flip on another strength and it doesn't work, that tells you get out quick, right? Bad environment, bad relationship. Um, this is not going to work if you're trying to flex all of your different strengths and none of them are welcome. Okay, we've kind of already talked about what they love to be acknowledged for. So let's move to the next one. Let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about communication. When you encounter a connectedness person, you're going to hear the warmth, the, the uh, desire to connect. You're going to feel like they want to take the time, to get to know you and to connect with you. They may want to talk about what's going on in the world. Um, they may want to talk about, you know, the tsunami that just that just happened due to the um, volcanic eruption. That's a big deal to them and who's being affected across the world. They really care about what's going on socially. Um, and so these are some of the things that you can pick up on when you're listening. You know, is this person actually a connectedness person? Are they coming from a place of needing that connection with others? And so if we are working with them then we might also want to mimic some of these things back. We might want to use the word us and we, and we want to listen really well. And we want to make sure that we're open and willing to discuss different cultures and different religions and different genders. I know I've talked to a lot of connected people who say they do an extensive study at some point in their life on other religions across the world, just, just out of sheer interest and in being able to connect with different types of people all over the world. Um, they, they're going to want to talk about the why behind things. Um, yeah. Okay. We've covered most of that. Okay. Um, this is just a list of questions. Let's say you, you know, you know, let's, let's say you've done a strengths finder assessment with your team. You know, somebody is connectedness. They're brand new to the team. You don't need, you don't know them well, and you just need kind of some icebreaker questions to start the conversation. These are some examples of things that you could ask them that would be meaningful to them. Okay, if you are on the call and you do have connectedness, I've listed some, some ways that you can use your strength in a situation where you need to influence. You can see that this strength is a blue, which means it's a relationship building strength. It's a connecting strength, but it's not naturally an influential strength. So you guys have to kind of step out of your comfort zone and figure out strategically how to use your connectedness to um, help sell or influence either a product or service or yourself. Um, and so you have, you know, I've just listed some ways that you guys can think about how to do that effectively. Um, I think one of the best ways to do it is to really talk about how the product service or yourself or your skills, you know, ties into that bigger picture and bigger purpose. If I'm on the other side of that conversation and I'm trying to sell you or influence you, I've listed some bullet points here that may help you buy into what I'm doing or help understand my product or service in a way that you need to hear it to be able to connect the dots. These are all really good, Brandy. <laughs> Make a lot of sense. Yeah, great. Um, okay. And then if you are in an interview setting, um, I listed some ways of how you might be able to sell yourself in that interview. Um, because that's really hard, right? To, to understand how do I actually sell myself with connectedness in an interview setting? So, you know, you want to discuss, for example, how 
you could come in and break down silos and barriers across cultures or how you, you are able to really see the disconnects and then, you know, take the time to bring people together to make those connections. Um, so there's just different things that you can, you know, key in on to discuss during an interview type setting. Randy, I would think those are things you can also tie into your star stories during the interview process. You weave these things into your star stories. Can you explain to everyone on the call, Pete, what a star story is for those who don't know? Sure. Um, it's called star. Sometimes you'll see it as rats, which is the opposite. But star is a situation that you're in. These are all panel interviews that you're in. And they'll give you a situation. That's what the star is, a situation. And the task you had to accomplish, uh, the activities you perform, or the action you took, and then the results you got. Uh, and that all ties it in. So if I tell Brandy, yes. well, give me a situation that made you uncomfortable at work, then her response is to give me a star story as to how what the situation was and what the action she took to resolve that situation. The reason you see rats sometimes is that oftentimes we only have like 90 seconds to two minutes to respond. And if you get too tied up in the situation, the task and all that, you may not have time to get to the results. So some people say use rats instead. I'll give you the outcome, the result, and here's how I got there. Then you'll describe how you got to that result. Um, so you make right. sure you get the result in there first. Yes, so. that, that makes complete sense to me to you know, help someone on the other side in, in, understand the impact first. And then if they're interested in that impact, you can help them understand how you got, how you got there. Yeah, that's great. Okay, um, I listed out, you know, again, a couple of observations that you can make, you know, does this person seem to have a sense of how everyone is connected? Are they talking about connections? Are they trying to connect with you? Um, are they focused on social implications? Do they light up when you start talking about things going on in the world? Uh, if that's the case, then they may have connectedness somewhere in their top um, 10 strengths. And I also listed the words here that you need to use when you're talking to them. So if you really want to engage a connectedness person psychologically, there's some key words that you can use in the conversation that are going to spark their interest and, and, and help them want to continue the conversation or to continue talking to you. Okay, let's go through, through these. If you are a connector, you may naturally react philosophically when someone brings you bad news or shares their frustrations or concerns with you. And it's important to validate those people's emotions and feelings when they need to vent versus trying to be like, oh, we're all connected. It's all gonna work out. The energy is coming your way. <laughs> they are like, no, I just need to vent for a minute and I need you to just accept my feelings. Um, if you also, if you're part of that 30% who also has empathy, you're not going to, you're not going to need this advice. You're going to do it intuitively. But if you don't have empathy high up, you just might have to remind yourself to, to do this. Because of your sense of connection, you may unintentionally step over boundaries when you're trying to be helpful. Uh, so we do need to be aware and respect formal and informal organizational hierarchies of, uh, you know, just having that awareness of, you know, you may see how things are connected and you may automatically want to go um, step through those gates and make everything happen. But maybe sometimes there's some some formal um, structures that we need to respect and go through. And it's slower, but um, it will help you, uh, you know, accomplish what you want to accomplish in that particular culture, environment or organization. Um, sometimes turmoil and upheaval could upset a connectedness person to the point where they're perceived as naive or fragile. Now, again, that's a perception. That's not saying that's who you are, but, you know, in those situations, it is, you know, considering how will I cope with this adversity in a healthy way so that people see me as, you know, um, sort of resilient versus seeing me as a way that I'm, I'm really not just because I'm upset. Okay. You also want to avoid becoming too preachy. This kind of goes along with that philosophical part. 
uh, people have their own set of beliefs and we have to respect those, of course. And then we don't want to spend time trying to persuade others to see, you know, our own beliefs and perspectives. We don't want to try to force them to link things together or make the connections that we make because they just might not be able to, quite frankly. And then uh, I got I got this piece of advice from someone as a connector. They said if I could go back and give myself, you know, advice when I was younger, it would be to look for times when I disconnect when I should be reaching out and connecting. Okay, um, collaboration, working well as a connector. There's lots of things you can do for your team. One of the things that you know you can do is really take responsibility for sharing with the team your site, you know, the disconnections that you see when you think the team is harming itself unintentionally and bringing that to the team's attention and saying, you know, does anyone, you know, have some possible suggestions of, you know, rekindling these connections so that we don't miss out on A, B, C, D, and E. If you can see those things and your team can't see them, you just might have to bring them to the attention of the team so you can resolve them, address them and resolve them. That's a, that's a really good one, Brandy. And <clears throat> a lot of times, I'm sure you know this too, when you're doing consulting work, you have to say, you have to call out the elephant in the room. You have to be able to say, you're, you're not being honest with this person or you're not, you know, I don't see, you know, you might maybe not say it quite that direct, but mm -hmm. you have to be able to pull those things out for people can clean up the walls between them and start to communicate and collaborate. They may, they may not be in love with each other, but they need to be able to work well together. So. Yeah, Finder is a great tool for that because it really says for some yeah. reason, there's not trust here, but it may just be because there's a lack of understanding of the intent behind what someone else is trying to do. Absolutely. Uh, okay. If I'm to partner with you, I have to think about, you know, what kind of stuff you want to talk about, what kind of stuff you care about, um, and how I can be a good partner to you based on the things that matter most to you. So I need to acknowledge and respect the connections that you're making, even if I don't agree with them. I need to get on board with, okay, this person really cares about connecting, so let's take the time to connect. Um, and this person really cares about as a, in a partnership about community. So how do we become our own community as a relationship or even a family, or even if I'm just an external partner, you know, like a, a strategic partnership, I need to think about, you know, how do we create that sense of community, et cetera, et cetera. Is there anything else on here from you connectedness people that you really wish others would do or consider or interact with you in a, in a way that works well for you? I need to pick on someone. I wanna pick on someone we haven't heard from. So. I guess it's gonna be Lori. I know we've heard from you a little bit, but I wanna hear from you again. Um, Lori, do you feel like there is, you know, a way that, that someone could interact with you that's extremely positive for your connectedness? When they talk about collaboration, not here's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. that is the opposite of you know getting connected with me so what would be a good way for them to approach you it's it's more um you know just finding out what my experiences have been it's like have you done this before mm -hmm. what has been your experience what's worked or what hasn't mm -hmm. um and i'll share mine is it's more that back and forth collaboration um 
and then we can connect um, even, it doesn't even have to be on a personal level, even, you know, just being a part of the same team and where we want to go with the project or the company or, or whatever it happens to be, mm -hmm. it's more of collaboration um, rather than- Probably for you also seeing all the pieces, because if you see all the pieces, then you can also make the connections. Well, context is my number one. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, sometimes it's um, people don't like to talk about, well, in the past, or we've already tried this previously, so we're not going to do it this way again. Well, why didn't it work? Because it might work now based on what we know or what we and, didn't know. And the different factors that are going on today that weren't there. Right. I like yeah. Big picture, and then narrowing it down to what those steps are going to be, what those actual actions are going to be. So if that's kind of the approach that I like, mm -hmm. um, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes bosses will connect me with folks that I really don't want to be connected with. There are a few out there, <laughs> but so I... <clears throat> It's uh, so I usually lean into the, that other person's strengths before I even talk about whatever I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So they are who they are. I am who I am. And if we can come together in the middle, that's what I'm looking for as far as the connection. I, it doesn't have to be 100%. Hey, if we can meet halfway, 50 50, yeah. I think that's a success. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I've listed here for all of you uh, connectedness people, um, you know, if you're trying to do something specific and you need a partner for it, uh, I've just listed some potential partners for you if you happen to know people's strengths uh, to, to help uh, balance your, your own and to make your connections better you know, to add, to add some oomph to them in, in some way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I listed a few things for relationships. We have talked about those quite a bit. Um, let's see if there's anything that I'd like to point out before we go to the next slide. I just basically with this, you guys, I listed all these good relationship things and then said with connectedness, how you can get those things. So like, for example, of course, trust, right? Every time the slide comes up on any strength, that's going to say build trust. But the way that connectedness can do it is to do what they say they're going to do. That's something they do very well. So if they're proactively doing that all of the time in the relationship, then they're going to be proactively building trust. Uh, I love the last one. It's it's kind of deep, you know. Understand that your partner may not feel, uh, it may not need to feel as connected as you do. They may not see how things are connected, and your partner may not believe that everything happens for a reason. And just understanding this will help you be a better partner, so that you're not putting a false expectation on your partner to be something they're not. Okay, if you're in a leadership position, there's just lots you can do for your teams. But I think the biggest thing that I got out of the research I did on this was the fact that you can have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody and care about them above and beyond performance and to care about who they are, what they want with their life, how they're connected to their job, to help them understand their contribution and how it fits into the overall bigger picture of the strategy, the company, the state, the country, the world, uh, it really drives a deeper level of engagement at work and, and the fact that you care about your employees beyond just the work. I think that's probably the, the you know, one of the roots of why connectedness makes us such a good leader or, or a people manager. If you are managing someone with connectedness, there's lots of actions that you can take to 
work well with them and also to look for certain projects for them. You know, they're going to love to be on multicultural global initiatives. That's where they're going to be at their best. Um, and I also uh, got this from Pete. You know, we were talking the other day at lunch about how, you know, when when are they going to learn and be at their best learning? Because um, they are actually very human oriented, if you guys have heard today. So they need to be with other humans, engaging with other humans. Um, they also need to understand what they're, what, why what they're learning actually fits into the bigger picture or they're not very interested in learning it. Um, so these are, this, if you want a connectedness person to learn or to learn something in particular, this is their learning style. If you're a coach like me, there's definitely some things that we can do for connectedness people, which is to give, you know, help the help give them opportunities or show them where they may have opportunity to use their connectedness strength to be at their best. And a lot of this comes into play with all of their other strengths and helping them see how all of their other strengths are connected to bring that full picture together of what value they individually add to this world and to society. It's much easier for them to see out than for them to see themselves. So it's our job to help show them those connections as coaches. I have a quick question. Number three, explore nonprofit opportunities. I'm wondering yes. how that's related. I'm wondering how that's related because I recoil when I look at that. I love people that do nonprofits and I love to support them and help them and all that, but I could never deal with it being a nonprofit, I don't think. Well, Just what's your hesitation? Um, because it's too hard to get people to do what you want them to do rather than in my in my little mind rather than in a for-profit business. I've always found it easier to, not that I'm, you know, I'm not, you can tell my person, I'm not somebody that says, you must do this, you must do this, you must do that. But in a nonprofit world, when I've dealt in volunteer kind of situations, I find it very frustrating. But I didn't say, yeah, I don't. I didn't say volunteer nonprofit. I said nonprofit. Nonprofits okay. make money just like corporations do. They just make it through fundraising. Right, right. Yeah, um, I think in the corporate world, a lot of times you're at the mercy of shareholders that may not have the best interest in mind. They just want to make money. So I can see both sides of that coin, but I agree with Brandy. Just because a nonprofit, uh, you can work for a nonprofit as an operations director, and, you know, and not and be pay, obviously compensated mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to volunteer. I can volunteer anywhere. It doesn't have to be a nonprofit necessarily. Uh, the, I, I get that. <clears throat> the reason behind putting it on here is because those are the entities that are helping people all over the world and the globe on a bigger scale without boundary. You know, uh, that's not saying corporations don't do the same, but when you think about like, we'll take the one I support, Operation Underground Railroad, they don't care who you are and they don't care where you are if you are a child that's been human trafficked they go after you. They try to say, you know, they try to go get you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why that's listed on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, and then these are just, you know, a set of actions that y'all can take throughout the week. If you do have connectedness, if you feel like you can't do these, then you got to look at whether you're at the right company and the right role with the right manager, because these are the things you should be able to take to be at your best every single day. Um, I'm going to come back to this, but I just really quickly want to thank Abhishek. He's not able to make the call today, but he's the one who helped me with my understanding of connectedness. It's his number three strength. Do, do, does anyone on the call have a question for the connectedness people on the call to, you know, really fill in and fully understand their connectedness strength today? I do. I Laurie, I'm curious, since you're in learning and development, 
do a lot of presentations and stuff like that. And we just covered knowing how people learn. When you put together a presentation or you know, whatever you're trying to do, how do you determine the best way to do it so you connect with the audience and trying to achieve everybody's learning style at the same time almost? Or do you, I mean, how do you, how do you work with that? Well, being that learner is my number two strength, <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at it. Um, a lot of times, if you're in a, um, a webinar, seminar, you're in training, you know, any kind of training, um, if the facilitator or the instructor is not letting you know how you connect to this learning, what you're going to learn, what are the benefits? You know, it's it's the with them. What's in it for me? I try and spell that out. It's like, you're here because your boss told you, I'm sorry, but I'm going to give you the best um, experience that I can. So when you go back to your desk, you understand that what we're doing here is going to benefit you, it's going to benefit the person next to you, and it's going to make your job easier. Um, so hopefully that in the training that happens, but it's making those connections and me being understanding of, I know they've got a job to do and it's, um, they don't need more stuff to do. They need a better way to do it. So if I can point that out and make those connections to their job and making it easier. So it's not just connecting with the person, but understanding what's in it for them and but, being able to point that out. So if, if I was to give you, you know, whatever, I hire you to do this for me, whether it's an employee contractor, it doesn't make any difference. I hire you and I say, I need you to present whatever, you know, a strength finder session to my employees. Mm -hmm. Are you being the person that hired you going to quiz me as to, okay, what's the audience like? Uh, Absolutely. Do you like to learn visually? Do you like to learn? Do you want me to just fill out a bunch of PowerPoints with words? I mean, I can do that too. <laughs> but I mean, I would think those questions need to be asked in order to know how the audience is going to react to the material. Because you're right, in some instances, uh, I have to be in that class. I have no choice. My boss told me I had to be there. But nonetheless, it's something I need for my job going forward. So I'm trying to learn it. But if I'm not a visual learner and you're presenting just words on the screen, I'm not going to absorb that as well. Uh, so how do you determine the best way to present material? It, boy, that's a really long conversation. It depends. <laughs> so it, it depends on the audience. So if I'm presenting to a bunch of engineers, um, I'm not going to have my screen full of pictures. I might have it full of diagrams of how things are happening or a flow chart or something that they would relate to not something that I would relate to because it's, I'm trying to connect it to them. Um, so it's very important as a presenter to understand who the audience is and to be able to connect with them so they engage with the training or the learning, or the understanding. But yeah, so not only knowing what the who the audience is, but then how, what their typical learning style is, maybe not as an individual, but overall, uh, you know, if we say engineers, we have found they typically learn best like this, then this is how we're going to conduct the training. Right. And it could be a, a, a PowerPoint. It could be a, a video. It could be an e-learning. There's, there's so much technology out there that I can do it 10 different ways to Sunday. So, um, it just depends on the audience, but I need to understand that audience and connect with them for me, so I can be able to, to share that information with wh whoever that audience is. Um, so that's my take on that. Any other questions for me or for anyone else on this call today about connectedness? Brandy, I have one question real quick. Um, I work for school district. Do teachers have connectedness top or no? Sure. I mean, do, do you see that? 
Have you ever worked with educators, like coaching yeah. educators? Yeah, I've, I've seen it. You, you really can think about this, Mariana. Um, 12% oh. at least are probably going to be connectedness. Um, and in the teaching world, there might be a, a few more. But um, again, the main strength in teaching environments is going to be learner, uh -huh. uh, which is the 28%. And also in elementary, like smaller children, you'll see developer a lot pop up. Um, so yes, you do you do see it, but you you know just remember you don't see connectedness all that often. Actually, okay. uh, okay. it's only twelve percent of the whole population, but um, you do see it among executives. You see it among architects and engineers. You see it among I see it all the time in the health field. And I see see it among uh, education, so it just it just kind of depends on their other strengths. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But they do they do gravitate towards just being able to work with people, um, as well as you know their other strengths. This is the the one that really enjoys working multiculturally. Other questions. All right, so I'll just run you through our end slides really quick so that you know what's what's coming. Um, you know, I've listed the different ways to take the assessment if you have not yet taken it. And um, it, you, you can take it in different languages. And there's an app on your phone called Gallup Access. If you'd like to download that and log in, you can get lots of tips every day. You can also sign up for Strengthology Insights, which is the website that I've developed to help us all use the strengths in a, in a very productive way. So you can sign up to that. I am gonna put the slides on LinkedIn. I am going to put this recording on YouTube. So if um, you don't know where to get those things, please just ask and uh, you know shoot me a message on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to direct you to those. You can also go to YouTube if you want to listen to some videos on different people with with, the, with your different strengths and get more in-depth information on that, as well as there's lots of strength-based books out there if you'd like to become a strengths-based leader or a strength-based salesperson, um, et cetera, et cetera. Everything I do in my business, 10% is donated to Operation Underground Railroad, which I mentioned earlier. And then here's my information that you can uh, feel free to go connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't already. And please feel free to invite anybody and everybody to these sessions. They're just an hour of, you know, discussion every Monday. Thank awesome. you again, Thank Brandy. You, Brandy. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you too. Thank you. What's on top for Thanks, next everyone. week? Thank you. Oh, what should we do next week? Who wants me to do one of their strengths next week? <laughs> I haven't checked the list, but have you done context? We have not done context because it's one of my bottom strengths. <laughs> 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 okay, well then it. let's not do context. No, um, let's do it. Let's how do about, it. How about self-assurance? Yeah, self-assurance. You guys want to do a rare rental? Con context is my last. <laughs> okay, context so is my first. <laughs> same, same look. <laughs> so, uh, hey, I'm I'm for whatever. I'm gonna be here for all of them. So. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Damn. Thank you. Bye. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Oh, which one are we doing? Context. Context. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe. You too, Maruno. Thank you.